Now Susan Bremer Hoffman from GRC ISPRA will introduce her lecture on regulatory issues and standardization. Susan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have heard a lot uh, from the regulatory bodies that there's an urgent need on standardized methods. And I would like to explain a bit how we, the UNCL, is responding to this um, standardization needs. Mm, which one? Okay, first of all, the outline of the methodological approach. We have started to collect what kind of information are needed via surveys, via uh, literature research, but also by extracting relevant information from documents released by the regulatory bodies. Then we have screened the websites of standardization bodies and regulatory bodies to understand what kind of methods and standards are available so far. And then we have mapped these both information sources um, to see what are the methodological gaps that we have so far. And in the next step, we have used these gaps and looked what, to what extent the UNCL method can respond to, uh, to these kind of gaps. And finally, we have started um, to um, interact with the standardization bodies, in particular with the ASTM. So first of all, we, had, um, we were looking for the information needs of the regulators. We had three surveys with regulatory bodies from 2015 to 2017. The first survey was done with the IPRF Nanomedicine Working Group that are the regulators meeting here regularly at CLINAM. Then um, the second survey, um, we we use the EU Innovation Network. That is a network shared by the Finnish competent authorities and by the European Medicine Agency. And there are the European competent authorities have responded to this survey. And finally, we had a workshop in ISPRA um, at the JRC on bridging communities where we also had um, uh, a survey uh, in, um, in this workshop. So we had 20 to 30 questions related to the physical, chemical, and biological characterization of nanomedicines. Here is just an illustration um, how that the results look like. Um, here I was asking for physical, chemical properties related um, to nanomedicines um, and, and needed um, for the approval of clinical trials. Um, we have published the first survey already. The other uh, publications um, are planned for the other surveys. So then we were also interested what, uh, which kind of information we get from the literature. And in particular, we wanted to uh, get more information on the compatibility with the blood and immune system. So we have seen that lipid-based uh, nanoparticles are mainly um, interacting with the complement system that we have, but we also have a kind of uh, immunogenicity of um, uh, lipid-based nanoparticles. Polymer-based uh, particles, we have seen the major adversity is the accelerated blood clearance. And inorganic nanoparticles, they show a wider range um, of all kinds of interactions with the immune system. Also, this information is, uh, in, the, is in press, so it uh, will be publicly available soon. So in the next step, we looked what kind of standards do we have. So we searched the ISO, SEN, and ASTM standardization bodies, but we also looked at um, uh, what are the regulatory bodies um, provide which kind of guidances. And what we can see that we have a number of standards for nanotechnology-based products. But if we look to what extent they address nanotechnology-based medical products, we see that the standards are very low. So it seems that there is an urgent need also here. Um, this is also a publication. This is already online. Here a bit more detailed. We have mainly guidance documents. We have um, standards for nanotechnology-based products um, for size measurement, but not for uh, so much for medical applications. So it seems that there is, is a need. So that is a busy slide. Um, just to guide you through the information needs that we have extracted from the EMA reflection paper, from the report of the Global Summit on Regulatory Science in 2016, a very rich report, very interesting, and from our 
own uh, surveys, and we can see that in this gap analysis we have some clear gaps, for example, in the field of drug loading, drug release, um, the various endpoints uh, related to the immune system. So at the same time, you have seen the slide already by uh, Simon, um, the colleagues from the laboratory have transferred the, um, the tech, uh, different met methods from the NCI and CL. We had a qualification process which demonstrated already the robustness um, and the repeat repeatability of the um, tests, uh, the SOPs that we have transferred. And during this um, process, we have now um, around 30 standard operation procedures um, qualified in all laboratories of the UNCL consortium, and they are also publicly available on both uh, websites, on the NCI and CL website, but also on the UNCL website. So the next step we did, we looked into our gaps that we have identified and um, mapped it against our methods. And what we can see is that um, the UNCL and the NCI and CL, they offer uh, methods that can fulfill regulatory gaps. Um, and these methods are now uh, presented to standardization bodies, and we have um, um, the two responsible here in the room, and you will hear in the afternoon much more from Matthias Rösslein and Brian Nelson. So we presented it to the subcommittee on nano-enabled medical products to figure out what kind of additional information is needed to st fully standardize um, the uh, method fulfilling the regulatory gaps. So one other example um, that we are also following is um, what are the, are the existing test methods sufficient um, to, uh, to be used for nanomedicine. And here, very simple uh, example, cytotoxicity. We have an ASTM standard and we have an ISO standard. And we have challenged uh, this uh, test, very simple MTT uh, test and an LDH test with cell lines with um, the cytotoxic drug um, uh, Doxil. And what we can see, we cannot establish a dose-response curve of a cytotoxic drug. So something must be going uh, wrong here with the test. The same here with the LDH um, test, the, the yellow bar, we cannot um, get a dose-response curve. But by changing the readout system, just using a Hearst probadium iodide uh, staining uh, and using high-content imaging, we can um, easily see um, uh, that we have a dose response curve, and um, this would make very easily this standard suitable uh, also for uh, nanomedicines. So, in conclusion, we have a lack of standards uh, needed by the regulator uh, that are needed um, by the regulatory community. Standards that are used in other sectors might be suitable to assess nanomedicine, but we need to further investigate um, to what extent we can use them. And this is a, a theme that we are planning in a sister project of the UNCL, the REFINE project, and we would like to have a conference on this in the um, beginning of next year. So the test methods that we are used, uh, that are used by the NCI, NCL, and the UNCL fill regulatory gaps. They have been successfully transferred from the US to Europe. And the harmonization of, two, of the two test methods support the regulatory acceptance and contribute by, by this to the mutual acceptance between, of data between the US and uh, the European Union. And we have initiated the standardization process um, by presenting the test method uh, to the ASTM committee, and that will be further on followed uh, in the refined project. And with this, I would like to thank you.